Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay, so last time, just to do one more example from last time to bring us all back <laughs> into the college algebra. Last time we were talking about quadratic equations and and quadratic expressions and factoring and solving and the relationship um, among those. Uh, so here's such an example of something that we did last time. Uh, the instruction could be factor, say 5x squared minus 2x uh, minus 14. 14. And then in the opening weeks of school, of uh, the semester, we considered such things and we figured out kind of a neat way to do it by saying, well, if we can find two numbers whose product is the product of the first and last, 5 and negative 14, well, that'd be negative 70. Two numbers whose product is negative 70 and whose sum is negative 2. Can you think of two numbers that do it? 7 and 10 almost do it, right? Almost. So, can't think of two numbers off the top of your head, so what can we do? Right. What we want to do is we want to switch to a related question. So we're going to switch to this one. So instead of factoring something, we're going to solve something else. 5x squared minus 2x minus 14 equal to 0. So what I want you to see, part of what I want you to see, is that this is this thing I'm pointing to an equation. No. No, so this, this is a quadratic expression. Whereas this, this thing on the right side of the page is a quadratic equation. So quadratic just because there's, because, because there's a degree two polynomial involved. So what I want you to understand is that this verb factor you can factor an expression, okay? And you can solve an equation, but you can't you can't mix those up, which is to say it doesn't make any sense to factor an equation. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense to factor an equation, and it doesn't make any sense to solve an expression. So you factor expressions, you solve equations. Okay, so apparently, here's the exercise that was posed, but apparently this, this is going to be useful for us to do this. So let's do it. So we'll use the quadratic formula to solve that quadratic equation. And just to remind you, that formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and then all of this divided by 2a. So that's something you're just expected to memorize. <clears throat> so for this specific uh, quadratic equation, that would be negative, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 14, and all of that divided by 2 times 5. Is there any question why the things get plugged in just so? <clears throat> and then the arithmetic circus, that would be what? 2 plus or minus the square root of how much? 4 and then that's going to be adding, so 20 
times that is 280, so 284, divide by 10. So there are two solutions. 2 minus square root 284 divided by 10. And 2 plus square root 284 divided by 10. So have we answered the question? So, no. <laughs> We've performed a whole bunch of work, but in the end, we haven't answered the question yet. In the end, the underlying question was to factor this expression. And then we noted, uh, but we can't do it in the easy way, so we're going to do this. And now how do we turn this work into the answer to this one? Right. The fundamental idea is that solutions, there's two of them, these two solutions are in correspondence with the two factors of this, which is to say that the factorization of this should look like x minus one of the solutions multiplied by x minus the other solution almost there's something there's one little thing that's missing from this but this factor can be that one and this one that one so even when I copy these two factors in there my answer still won't be right how do I make it right? So I'll copy them in there while you think about it. But even still, it's not right. What's not right? Missing the five, right? So this, the non-monicness of this expression, okay, now it's right. <coughs> so what this is, is this constitutes a method to factor any quadratic whatsoever. That being said, Suppose I gave you the following. I said, please factor w squared minus 10w plus 16. What would you do? <laughs> Just factor it nor normally. OK, so what does that mean? Right. Can you think of two numbers whose product is positive 16 and whose sum is negative 10? Yeah. Negative 2 and negative 8. And that's the answer. <laughs> now, you could have you could have done exactly this. You could have said, "Nope. I'm I'm done factoring. I only solve equations now." And you could have you could have gone the long way around. Okay done some stuff over here, blah, done all of that work. You could have done that. And that would have been legitimate. But what I want you to understand is that when, when you're able to do this, this is the first thing we learned. What it essentially is, is it's a way to shortcut this. It makes it to where you don't have to do it. So by all means, take the shortcut when it is available to you. Okay? Did you have a question? Yeah. Um, are you ever going to... Um, is there going to be a question that says...
factor using the quadratic formula? Or if it said that, would you have to switch it to solve and then switch it back? You can't just right. fill it in. Right, but I, I typically don't ask okay. that. What I do is I just force the issue by giving you one where it's required. Yeah. So if you were to <coughs> use the quadratic formula, but you didn't write solve and write out equals zero, like you kind of just did it in the middle and then put it in, would that be wrong? If, if it's not clear to the grader what you have okay. done, then it's, it's not right. Okay. Because the idea is, okay, is that you want, you know, imagine trying to explain this to your friend. Okay, how, how could you explain it to them clearly? Okay. Because, the, 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 you know, so it, in, in flat truth, okay, most people, most of the time, can get along without college algebra. That's the truth. <laughs> so then, uh, for example, okay, people who who are going to do writing for a living more or less can do along can get along just fine without college algebra. Okay, that's that's a fact. Uh, so then you, it, you you might wonder, well then why does the state of Texas say that to get a writing degree you have to take college algebra? The reason is because everyone can agree, I think that being able to write something clearly where the solution is quite clear and it could be this is the solution and this is the reason why it's the solution and the solution couldn't possibly be anything else to be able to converse in that way is is quite valuable because for example you may be writing and you may have a contract which says that I get paid so many so many so much money per page or whatever okay, you have to be able to reckon about it Would that still be correct? Yeah. Yeah. Anything that anything that's equivalent okay. to this is fine. Yeah, because you know, for example, two eighty four is divisible by four. Okay. So you could get a two to, out of the radical, and then you could factor out a two and then cancel with a two down there. You could do all manner of things. Okay. I'm just not interested in that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we can solve quadratics. Now what we're going to work on is solving equations generally. <clears throat> and in order to, to motivate this, I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to write a sequence of mathematical operations that has an error in it. But it won't be immediately clear where the error is. And I get, I get an image of this sequence of mathematical operations, or one just like it, on social media like every week. Okay, even from, from former students or family members, primarily just trying to aggravate me, I suspect. Okay, so, so here we go. Supposing that A is equal to B. I'm going to multiply both sides by A. Well, a times a, that could be written as a squared. And then b times a, I'll write that as ab. Now I'm going to subtract b squared from both sides. a squared minus b squared. ab minus b squared. OK. Now, because I've taken college algebra, I know that the left-hand side is the difference of squares. So the left-hand side can be factored. How does it factor? Not quite. Yeah. I mean, times a plus b. Right. The difference of squares factors as the product of conjugates. And then, as for the right hand side, I observe that there's the greatest common factor that can be factored out. What is the greatest common factor of the right hand side? B. So, factoring that out, the right-hand side looks like this. And now I notice, ah, both sides have a factor of a minus b. So I'm going to divide that out. 
get a plus b is b. And now I'm going to remember from the beginning that in fact a is b. So this is really b plus b is equal to b. So 2b is b. But now I see that there's a common factor of b, so I'm just going to I'm going to divide that out and get that 2 is equal to 1. Love it. I used to try and when I would get this image, I used to I used to try and point out what was wrong. <laughs> but now I just say, you know what? I have no idea. <laughs> I guess math is fundamentally broken somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere, I, I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about some things for a minute, and we're going to come back to this and try and, and try and figure out just what went wrong. What went wrong? Because I, I promise that something very obvious went wrong here. OK. So. This is a remark about truth-preserving operations. Let A, B, and C be in the reals. First, addition and subtraction. So A equal to B, if we add C to both sides, A plus C is B plus C. This operation is truth preserving. So now, I need to illustrate for you carefully what it means to be truth preserving. For example, 5 equal to 5. Is this an equation? Yes. What is its logical value? One. True. <laughs> Equations ha ha have only two possible logical values, true or false. So its logical value is true. Suppose that, suppose that we add 3 to both sides, which I'll illustrate like this. Suppose we add 3. both sides. The new left hand side is 8, the new right hand side is 8. So that's an equation. What is its logical value? True. True. And what I want you to observe, and what's important, is that we began with something that was true, and we ended with something that was true. Okay, how about this equation? 2 equal 9. So is this an equation? Yes. Yes. What is its logical value? False. So don't, don't, uh, I know that almost everyone comes into college algebra feeling squeamish calling 2 equal to 9 an equation. I know, I know that. But I'm, I'm telling you, it is an equation. The thing that, the thing that you know, the little squeamishness inside of you is that you know that its logical value is false. Okay, so supposing that we add 3 to both sides, well the new left hand side is 5, the new right hand side is 12. That is an equation. What is this new equation's logical value? False. <coughs> this is what it means to be truth preserving, which is to say, that if we start with a true equation and we add something to both sides, the result will still be true. 
And if we start with a false equation and add the same thing to both sides, the result will still be false. That's what it means to preserve the truth. Okay, good. So this is adding something to both sides always preserves the truth. And going in the other direction is just subtraction. So subtraction also preserves the truth. So now multiplication and division. Supposing we start with A equal to B. And then we multiply both sides by C. This is truth preserving, but there's a caveat. Preserving when, and then I'm going to leave a blank, and we're going to fill in that blank. So, for example, 5 equal to 5. That's an equation. Its logical value is true. Suppose we multiply by 3. Both sides. What is the new left hand side? 15. And the new right? 15. Also an equation, also true. So that's good. That means that multiplying by 3 is preserving the truth, if the, if the logical value is true to begin with. Does multiplying by 3 preserve the truth if the logical value is false? So there's an equation whose logical value is false. Multiply by 3, so that'd be 6 uh, equal 27. So this one was false, that one is false. So multiplying by 3 preserved false, that's good. However, there is, some, there is a way for us to break it. There is a way for us to do something that modifies the truth. What, what, what is that? Zero. If we multiply both sides by 0, something can go horribly wrong. So 2 equal to 9. That's an equation. Its truth value is false. Supposing we multiply both sides by 0. What is the new left-hand side? 0. What is the new right-hand side? 0. How about that equation? It's true. Maybe four exclamation points. Maybe that's enough. So do you observe that multiplying both sides of an equation by 0 does not preserve the truth? And alternatively, going in the other direction, Dividing by zero, both sides by zero, does not preserve the truth. So what's the caveat? Multiplication or, di or dividing both sides by zero is truth preserving when what? When c isn't zero. There's one more operation that we do a lot in our class. So I'll, there's, there's lots and lots of things you can do to, to equations. But we're just going to talk about three of them today. The last one is squaring both sides. Which is to say, suppose we start with a is equal to b. I'm talking about modifying it to a squared equal to b squared. And again, 
we have that this is truth preserving. caveat when when something so let's let's see if we can identify what the problem is okay so for example suppose we start with 5 equal 5 that's true let's square both sides so 5 squared equal 5 squared. The new left-hand side is 25. The new right-hand side is 25. So true, true. So squaring both sides preserve the truth in this case. How about negative 3 equal negative 3. Is that going to work? Well, negative 3 squared equal negative 3 squared. And that'd be 9 equal 9. So the first equation, what is its truth value? True. True. And the last one? True. So it worked then. But I claim that now that you've seen these two, you should be able to tell me one for which it will not work. Can you give me one that breaks it? Yeah. So, supposing we say this, negative 4 equal to 4. Is that true? It's false. Let's square both sides. Well, negative 4 squared is 16, and 4 squared is 16. And how about the last equation? What's its logical value? True. True. Do you observe? that the operation of squaring both sides did not preserve the truth in this case. Okay. So when, <laughs> when, it's hard to be precise without getting into, without, without avoiding stilted language, so when, I'll just write it like this, when you avoid that kind of situation when one of them is negative, the other positive, but they have the same absolute value, then the, that equation is false, but the square of that equation is true. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to solve a number of equations, and we're going to carefully do it, and we're going to have to keep track of, oh, well, let's only do truth-preserving operations, and when we don't do a truth-preserving operation, we need to carefully understand what that implies, how, how things could possibly go wrong. Okay. So, that being said now, here's this page. So if we number these, In the first place, in the first place, uh, this last equation is an equation. It is. And what is its logical value? It's false. And what the what the the image on Facebook is purporting to do is that it's telling you up here that presumably this begins as true. And we've performed a sequence of operations. We've performed a sequence of operations. And 
supposing that this is true in the first place, evidently this could not be truth preserving, a sequence of truth preserving operations. Where did it go wrong? Well, let's try and look. So, in the first place, if A is zero, if A is zero, then that means B is also zero. That's what would make this equation true. And then you multiply both sides by A, which is zero, but that's actually okay in this case because it was already zero equal to zero. And if A is not zero, that means B isn't. And if you multiply both sides by A, that's still okay. So this step from one to two is actually fine. It's fine. How about from two to three? What are we doing? Multipl multiplying both sides by, no. Uh, actually, we're just performing arithmetic, right? right? Or performing algebra, so that's fine. How about three to four, what did we do? Subtract B squared. Is that truth preserving? Yeah? Yes. Adding and subtracting is, is, in all circumstances, truth preserving. How about from four to five, what did we do? Yeah, we just, we considered each side separately and performed algebraic operations on that side and on that side. So that's truth preserving because we didn't do anything to the equation, actually. What did we do from five to six? We divided by A minus B. We divided by A minus B. Now someone tell us the punchline. A minus B is zero. Because the first equation is telling us that A and B are the same. So, so if A is equal to B, then A minus B is zero. So from line five to line six, you divide it by zero. That's the problem. Okay. Interesting. It looks legitimate, right? <laughs> it kind of looks legitimate. Okay, until you think about it for a moment. Okay. <clears throat> so, I and I, I promise you that all the different things on Instagram and Snapchat and everything else that show show these things, okay, they all have their own error multiplying both sides by zero, dividing both sides by zero, whatever. Good. So now what we want to do is we want to make it, we want to make it through some exercises without making our own kinds of errors. So here's an example. So solve 5x squared uh, equal to, no, 5x to 4, 5x to 4 is equal to 80x squared. Okay, so now I'm going to solve this, and I'm going to solve it incorrectly. I'm going to solve it incorrectly because I want you to see in the first place, so I'll tell you that this, if I were to ask college algebra class course to solve it, I expect that many students would solve it in the following incorrect way. And I want you to see how easy it is to fall into the trap of making mistakes. And then after that, I'll show you how to always avoid them. So the first thing that I notice is that that's a 5 and 80 is divisible by 5, so I'll divide by 5. Is that truth preserving? Yes. So then x to 4. 80 over 5 is 16 x squared. And then, well, if I can divide by 5, I can see that, that here's uh, 4 x's. That's x to 4 and that's x to 2. So I'm going to divide by x squared to rid myself of that. 
x to 4 divided by x squared, well that would be x squared, and the new right hand side would be 16. And then, oh I know the, the numbers that square to 16, 4 and negative 4. And this is wrong. It looks so good, doesn't it? What went wrong? So let's consider here for a moment. <clears throat> is, four, is 4 actually a solution? Well, we could verify that by plugging stuff in, right? So let's, let's use our calculator real quick. <coughs> Uh, and do 5 multiplied by 4 to 4 equal to 80 multiplied by 4 to 2. So the left hand side I get 1, 2, 8, 0 and the right hand side I get 1, 2, 8, 0. So that's good. That fits. Similarly negative 4 will fit. So, so that's good. But now I'd like to ask th about this equation. What if you plugged in zero? What is the left-hand side if you plug in zero? Zero. What is the right-hand side when you plug in zero? Zero. That means that zero is a solution to this equation. But you lost it. You lost track of it. It would be like, it would be like if, if you, you went to the dog park with three dogs and you came back with two. Right? That, would be, that would not be good. <laughs> so we lost one. Well, what happened? What went wrong? That went wrong. So dividing by 5, notice, notice I even said it. I said, I'm going to divide by 5. Is that truth preserving? And then everybody said yes. And then I said, OK, now I'm going to divide by x squared. And then I didn't ask. <laughs> I didn't ask if that's truth preserving. It isn't. Why is dividing by x squared not truth preserving? Because x could be 0. OK. So does everybody see? Ah, it is quite easy. It's quite easy to fall into the trap. Okay, so, so this, is, this is sad. <coughs> so rather than falling into this trap, here is a method that will always pick out for you the correct solution. So solve 5x squared equal to 80x to 4. So in the first place, what you need to do is you need to consider the natural domain. Did I do them backwards again? Yeah. I've, got, I've really got something for that. I'm not really sure what's going on there. <laughs> Four here and two here. Okay, so <coughs> natural domain. So would someone please remind us what natural domain is? All x values that complete the solution, or like that fall into the equation. Mm -hmm. It's all the x's that you could, in principle, plug in. That doesn't mean it's all the x's that when you plug in you get something that is, you get an equation that is true. For example, if we were to plug in 10 to this, then this would be what, 50,000 uh, equal to um, 8,000? Okay, well, is 10 part of the natural domain? Yeah, but it's not part of what? The solution. So what we want is we want the set of all x's that are under consideration at all. So are there any x's that could possibly cause th the equation to be undefined? Not false, but undefined. Yeah, we can plug in anything, right? So the natural domain is all x. Notably, included among all x is what? Zero. <coughs> so
So now we're going to perform our operations. And what I'm going to do is instead of doing this, these operations, I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to avoid, insofar as possible, performing any divisions. And I'm going to avoid performing divisions because if I perform no divisions whatsoever, then I couldn't possibly divide by zero. Okay, so I'm going to move the 80x squared to the other side. And now I have an equation that looks like this. And now that everything is on the same side, I can ask myself, self, what's the greatest common factor of these? 5x squared. So that is to say that if we write 5x squared, we should be able to write whatever else goes in there. So what goes in those round parentheses? x squared minus 16. And notably, at this position, we have the product of two factors is equal to 0. The product of two factors is equal to 0, which means that this equation, which is relatively complicated, breaks into smaller equations, which is what we want. <coughs> we want to break it into pieces. So now we have two equations. <coughs> We have 5x squared is equal to 0, or we have x squared minus 16 is equal to 0, both of which are simpler than the original. So how about this one? Well, there's only one thing that could possibly solve this, right? 0 is the only thing that could satisfy this, because if x were positive, it would be 5 times positive. If x were negative, then it would be fi still 5 times positive, because you square a negative and it's positive. So the only, one, the only way this one goes is to 0, so x is 0. How about this one? There's lots of ways to proceed with this one, right? This is a quadratic equation. <laughs> we spent so much time on them. How about, can we factor it? Yep. Yes. So x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 4 <coughs> equal to 0. And then, oh, this one splits into pieces too. Normally we don't write the split because you just sort of do it all in your head. But I want you to see that that's how this works. So, the, so what's the conclusion? So notice that we did not lose track of 0. And in the end, the reason is because we performed no divisions. OK, good. So now let's have another one. How about solve square root 15 minus 2x equal x. So on such an equation, when we're solving things, what is the very first thing we do? Natural domain. Natural domain. So, I'll do the easy part, right? When the right-hand side is x. Nothing can go wrong with that, right? So that's fine. How about the left-hand side? Could anything go wrong with it? Yeah. What could go wrong? Can't have negatives under the radical, right? Because the presumed set is the reals. Remember, remember the standing order is that, unless otherwise stated, all variables and expressions are real. So the natural domain is that the argument to that radical has to be greater or equal to zero. So then we can solve 15 greater or equal to 2x, so 7 and a half is greater or equal to x, 
And then in interval notation, that's this. Which is to say, we can go up to and including 7.5, but not beyond. Negative million is fine. 7.4 is fine. 7.6 is too much. So understand what that means. That's, that's all the x's <coughs> for which the equation is defined. That doesn't mean that the equation evaluates true. What is the, the, so the natural domain is the set of definition. What is the name for the set of all the inputs so that the resulting equa equation is logically true? Solution, Solution right? <laughs> that's much better than that mouthful sentence that I just tried to say. Okay, so let's perform our operations. So here's this, here's this thing we were handed. And the problem that we need to overcome is the fact that there are variables both inside and outside the radical. That's the problem. We need them to be all outside or all inside but not, not, in, not in two different places. That's the problem. So how can we overcome this? Square both sides. However, do, re do remember that a couple pages ago, we just got finished saying that squaring both sides does not preserve the truth in all circumstances. So we're performing this operation out of necessity but I'm going to mark this for myself so I remember to come back and consider the implications of what that might mean. So now, what is the new left-hand side after squaring it? <coughs> Good. But don't you remember when I was talking about squares and square roots and when they're happening at the same time, I always have been harping on something. What, what was it? Absolute value. Does absolute value show up here? Does it? And the answer is no. It doesn't. But why not? So it has to do with the following. Moving from here to here, the thing I was saying before is this. The square root of x squared, like so, that is the absolute value of x. But that's not what we're doing. Rather, what we're doing is the square root of x squared. So do you, do you see the distinction between these two? This one is saying square first, then radical. This one is saying radical first, then square. The distinction is that, in principle, for this one, x could be negative, because we're going to square it, which would take it to a positive value, and then we could compute the, the radical. Whereas this one, in order to do to do the radical first, what ha what is by assumption true about x? It's already greater or equal to zero. So that means that there's no need to compute absolute value when it comes out. This is the one we're doing. Okay, now for this equation, what can we do? Yeah, but I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to put everything on the right. So 0 is x squared plus 2x minus 15. Oh, surprise, surprise, a quadratic equation showed up. So we could use the quadratic formula. Please don't. Can you think of something even better? Okay. Factoring. x plus 5 times x minus 3. <coughs> so the solutions are negative 5 and 3. However, however, 
these solutions are the fruit of a poison tree, right? Because we performed an operation that is potentially not legitimate to get there. So that raises the question about whether or not these solutions are legitimate. So the only way to confirm or deny their legitimacy is now to check. So let's check x is negative 5. What do I mean by that? Let's plug it into the original equation. So 15 minus 2 times negative 5 equal negative 5. Well, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 15 minus negative 10 is 25. So this is square root 25 equal to negative 5. And the square root of 25 is 5. Well, how about that? Is that true or false? That's false. However, I'd like for you to observe. So what does that mean? Is negative 5 a solution? It is not. It doesn't satisfy the equation. However, look at that. If you were to square both sides, it would be true, wouldn't it? Which is why that is not a solution and why it seemed like it was, at least for a brief moment. Now let's check the other one. Which is to say, let's plug it into the original equation. 15 minus 2 times 3 equal 3. 15 minus 6 is 9. Square root 9 equal 3. Square root of 9 is 3. So how about that? That's true. So what does that mean about 3? It is a solution. So the conclusion is that the only solution is x is 3. So now this is the way it's going to go for the rest of the semester, is that we're going to solve increasingly more interesting equations. And you're going to come down to the end and say maybe one of these five, I think these five are the possibilities. And then maybe for the first one you say, but the first one's not a solution because it doesn't satisfy the equation. And I got it because of some illegitimate operation. The second one is not, a, is not a solution because it's not in the natural domain. But the last three, the last three really are solutions. And that's how the game will be played. So have a nice Monday.